The AI data mining never stops and more in this episode of ThreatWire. The research team at Tenable released a new write-up and proof of concept for an attack that may affect every major cloud service. The vulnerability CVE-2024-4323 affects FluentBit, a highly scalable data collector and processor that is used in many cloud environments. Its website boasts downloads from companies including Google Cloud, AWS, DigitalOcean, and more. The vulnerability was found in the endpoints, which handles the ability to enable, disable, or retrieve configured traces. During the parsing of the requests, the data is not properly validated, causing even non-strings to be parsed as strings. This was found to lead to memory corruption, which bad actors can take advantage of to DOS, or cause info leaks, or enable an RCE. The team at Tenable was able to DOS a target system using this wrongly parsed endpoint and published a proof of concept on the write-up. The vulnerability has been assigned a minimum CVSS score of 9.5 and affects versions 2.0.7 to 3.0.3. A fix was applied to the open source project's main branch on May 15th, so please be sure to update your existing version. This weekend, Chief Cloud Economist Corey Quinn uncovered that Slack has been using customer data to train AI models. Slack AI is a paid add-on for the core product that was created to help summarize conversations, threads, search for answers, and more. Clearly, when creating this as an opt-out feature, they knew there would be a large outburst of concern about the security as they've already published an entire page about the security of their AI models. Slack uses third-party large language models hosted within Slack's secure Amazon Web Services infrastructure and the message data already in your Slack workspace or enterprise grid organization to power a suite of productivity tools personalized to you. Slack AI only uses Slack data that members have access to at the time of request and won't display or use data from private channels or DMs they aren't a member of. At the moment, as stated earlier, the program is opt out, meaning that right now Slack is currently training AI models with your conversations. This very clearly is a huge privacy issue. At the time of discovery, Slack required you to email to opt out of the program. Now, according to Slack documentation, you can opt out directly through your workspace settings page. I'm curious, have you used the Slack AI features? What did you think? As we've all experienced, since a certain someone took over Twitter, the quality of content on the site has been as variable as a pendulum. Some days it's good, others it's bad. For those who don't know, on Twitter, there's a certain growth strategy that many growth hackers like to use. It's similar to the BuzzFeed created listicle. Basically, over a series of tweets, these users post high-level introductions to topics as an attempt to engage users and get them to follow and comment and reply with their content. This weekend, the InfoSec Twitter sphere saw two of these tweets go viral. One tweet by user Paral Guatam, reaching 5.5 million views, and another by user Alif Hussan, reaching 4.6 million views. These two tweet threads talk about common hacking products, including one sold here at Hack5, however unbiasedly, and completely misconstrue what the tools actually do. While much of the hacker community on Twitter went on to correct the incorrect descriptions of what these tools can do, many people in the replies were grateful about the incorrect education. In a time where cybersecurity knowledge is more important than ever, it's critical that we continue to educate and teach the masses about how important it is to know how these tools are used and actually are able to be used. Misinformation can lead to pretty dangerous things being spread and put all of us at risk. Um, so when you see tweets like this, speaking up and letting people know either one, how these products actually work, or two, What's incorrect about these write-ups is super critical to us as InfoSec professionals, cybersecurity enthusiasts, or just hackers, good or bad in general. Also, they literally used a video of a land turtle to show off a, what a Wi-Fi pineapple is and also used the wrong tool for what a USB rubber ducky is. Last week's AI story was the FIDO2 man in the middle attack. A few of you got it right in the comments. However, once again, let me know which story you think was written by AI this week. I look forward to reading your answers. 
Also, I published a new YouTube video on my personal channel if you wanna go check it out and it's linked below. I bought the VX Underground malware hard drive and took it on a little adventure. I think that y'all would really enjoy watching it. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of May 20th, 2024. Don't forget to head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire and support us over there. Thank you so much for helping keep this show ad free. If you want to find me online, I'm at Ending with Allie everywhere. So good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.